Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Dana meter Copenhagen. This is a tube voltmeter, ohm meter, and stuff like that. Uh, it's from 1955 to 1965, I guess. I don't know yet. I'm trying to figure this out. It's called Comet Standard or something like that. I'm a little bit scared about this. I had to take a steel brush and just remove all this paint that is just totally corroded. I think I even know now why. Look at that here at the bottom. That's probably a battery compartment. So I expect we have a super leaked cell in there somewhere. So I definitely need to see if I can figure out how to open it. And there's another reason why this meter here is on the side. And that is because the glass is loose and I don't want the glass to fall in and touch the needle. Because as you can see, I don't know, the, the needle actually does move. So I really hope I can save this really, really nice meter. Like As you can see here on my, compared to my hand, it's huge. There's actually a few other things that I find really, really cool here. Look at that. Kilovolts. 50 kilovolts. I mean, really? So, you need some sort of a special probe to connect to the... Oh, so this is... I don't have this type of connector. That one is probably some really, really special connector. So yeah, well, first let's look inside. Oh yeah, 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 one more thing. If you know how to Google this one, how to look it up, what is the exact type number more than just this dynameter? I really want to know um, more. How old is this one? Can we find schematics linked to this and that? There's nothing online, so... Please help me uh, with some oh links. My God. <laughs> I, I cannot explain smell that well. Because it's actually really difficult to explain how stuff smells. I don't know. It's still wet and slimy and absolutely disgusting. So there's a, some sort of a cardboard holder that sort of uh, hold. I don't know if it's one or two cells in here. And that's obviously used for the ohm meter. So this is the reference voltage for the ohm meter. And the one end of the cell is uh, touching this one. So the idea is you just loosen, uh, yeah, the one of them and then swap this and then you can pull out the cells and obviously somebody forgot to take out the cells when they left this meter some 50 60 years ago well it was new back then but so this corrosion is all over the place also inside this uh, inside the case let me try and show you this is sort of how the case looked on the outside all these loose, uh, I don't know, will I ever be able to get anything to work here? Because all these um, nasty acid fumes, they kind of go and stick to everything. But I will definitely try and clean this up. And um, I have to open the windows and uh, all that before I get into trouble here. But so far I see only two two tubes and I believe that one is the that one here is the main mains transformer and the, oh, look at those connectors they're really really deep 
and that is of course because of the 50 kilovolt and there will be probably some voltage dividers uh, most likely in a probe and then a much less voltage will, will get in here because you can see that is definitely not 50 kilovolts right and we got all sorts of resistors here for the currents but yeah <clears throat> Uh, I have to get back um, after a little bit more cleaning here because I I feel this is uh, not healthy. I'm a little bit curious to see if I'm able to video this and try and pull out the battery at the same. Ooh, look at that nasty, nasty. Nope. There was only one. Oh, it's everything here is falling apart. I can't really touch anything. Let me see if I can get a little bit of light. So it's not looking too bad in there, by the way. So that's kind of good. But I think I want to remove this entire tube of corrosion and badness. <laughs> it's just so bad. I really want this stinker. Stinker to get completely out of this unit. Then it's just too bad. Then we don't have a battery. That's just uh, how it is. So it's gonna be real good to get the meter all the way out, so I can clean it up. Also on the outside, it's a little bit nasty. But now I can take it out. I see. <laughs> There's a one thing that I found. Those screws here is, of course, what's needed to get inside the meter, right? Look at that, what I found. The holes, so you can access those screws without taking the meter out of the cabinet. <laughs> How dumb is that? Why didn't I see that when I took it out? Well, of course, I want to clean this and want to clean the front and all that anyway. So it's not a big deal. It's just I feel sometimes a little bit stupid making it. <laughs> too hard look what i found another little tube i think this is a diode uh, for ac uh, measurements isn't that just lovely um we got e80 and uh that will of course be a rectifier for the high voltage but i think i'm gonna dig into the electronics after i fix the meter Beautiful mains transformer. What a size! So I'm in. Look at that size. Definitely, I'm gonna clean this real good on the inside and the outside. I think I can polish this baker light so it's gonna look real nice and fine again. And the the glass is also quite all right. It's very thin. And here's a little paper gasket or something like that, right? Oh, look at that meter. It's just wonderful. And see, it is quite lucky in a good shape. Just need a little bit of cleaning. Oh, yeah, there is a little sticker here on the back. So there's a serial number and then 200 microamps that is it so now i'm ready with the meter there's a, a one little thing i want to show you when you are repairing a meter with a broken glass or a loose glass of course it's going to go down and hit the needle and bend it a little bit so when the meter is lying flat here on a table like that, then you just blow a little bit on the needle. And this way it, you will uh, see that it's moving freely after you have uh, checked the needle is now straight and free. Because when it's going to stand up now, it's never going to touch anything here or wherever, right? So now, see, after a little bit of polishing and gluing a little bit. I think I can get it a little bit more clean than this, but 
So far I'm quite happy, now I'll put it all back together. So, after a little bit of cleaning, you see, glass is also in, and I fixed the needle so it can move. I cleaned this as well. One potentiometer was loose, all knobs and all that stuff here is perfectly fine. I feel I am soon ready to power it up. There's just one little thing I wanted to show you. See the two E80CC tubes, double triodes, each of them. So we got four triodes all in all, isn't that amazing? And look what I found, another little tube. This one is a signal diode called EA50. I kind of like this circuit board kind of style. So it's not the really, really old flying components all over the place. They really tried to make this look nice and fine by pressing in these little metal inserts and making their own little circuit board like this. It's quite good for mass production in 1950. See, all the trimmers, they're neatly located like there, and we got one more here and one more there. I mean, good order and good layout and all that kind of stuff. Power resistors for all the current ranges, I think. And here is the last uh, E80CC, and this one is a special quality. I don't understand exactly why that is the case. Maybe it's just uh, replaced for some funny reason. And here's a little fuse. And uh, yeah, I think, think we should just uh, put oh, one little tiny little detail. That red wire here is the battery positive and it is connected to that point right there. And this is the bottom part, right? I just wanted to have this documented in case this wire falls off because I may need this uh, wire if I wanna play with the uh, resistance uh, measurements because I think the battery is uh, for that purpose. And um, from that side, you can't really see the name and number for this uh, signal diode, but with a magnifying glass from this, see, oh, can you see the tube in there? In the middle of the picture, it's impossible to focus. But I was actually able to zoom all the way in there and get a picture of the label. And this is how I figured out uh, that um, this was an EA50. So here goes the first power on. I left the, this is the left. Can you hear this? There's a special switch here, an extra segment of this switch. This is the mains on off switch. So this is 15 volts. I am in volts positive mode. And here is uh, my power supply. Of course I have a ground safety like that and then let's try and input a little bit of voltage i'll slowly crank up the mains while monitoring the current consumption and everything here seems uh, quite normal and we are now at 220 volts it's using 33 watts. And uh, look at that. There's a nice bulb. And we have a almost perfect zero. How about that? Oi, 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 oi. Did you hear that? <laughs> it starts to use a lot of power and this is why it is very very important to have one of these meters on so you will monitor the power consumption 
And of course, it's also very important to have it very, very quiet when you're powering up stuff. Because you can sometimes hear these funny, funny sounds and then see the power consumption just sky rise uh, real fast. And then obviously you need to do something. Otherwise, we're going to blow up stuff. So that is bad. We have a short circuit or a um, power failure somewhere. I think it is the high voltage rectifier. I will, of course, go and check this out. Yeah, exactly. So here's the high voltage uh, rectifier. And this one is, of course, nice and warm. Uh, way too warm. <laughs> oh, that is so fantastic. So I'll just have to take this out and then see. So let's test this one. So this is the selenium rectifier. And we are now in voltage mode. See? And then let's do it the other way around. Oh, oopsie doopsie. So yes, here is a shorted. And here. I think it was here, right? Yeah, here's the good one. Yeah, it's about two volts. This is the normal diode. It goes this way to that way. And then there isn't any connection to the other one here. This, this is just completely dead. Well, well, I'm I think I was really <laughs> lucky that I stopped the experiment because these can smell like rotten eggs if you let them burn. So I think we are ready for the next experiment. So this is a new rectifier bridge. I tried, tried my very best <laughs> yeah. because we have this annoying mount like that. This is not really mounted that beautiful. I'm sorry about that. But it's uh, quite nice and stable. I'll just leave this one hanging, hanging there for a little while. So, let's try again. I'm a little lucky now. I will, of course, do exactly the same. I'll screw up the... I'll turn up the voltage and there's 100 volts. Oh, only seven watts, so it's getting a lot better. 150, 190, okay, 220. And now it's only using 13 watts. Okay, 13 watts, and I think it is already ready to perform the first experiment. Um, yeah, that was 15 volts, and then we have, oh, yo, 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 that is 10 volts of input. So where are we? Um, I'm a little bit confused here. Okay, that one, here is the 15 volts scale, so that is 10, and a little bit under 10. So it's not that bad, really? <laughs> I'm quite happy about that, really? First experiment. What else can we do? We can try um, 50 volts. Ah, oh, it's not, it's not, in, yeah, 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 see? At just zero. Here is my thing. We are now in 15 again, okay? So I will have to adjust the meter for zero. That is interesting. Like so. And let's go with the 10 volts again. So now it says uh, nine and a little bit. So it's definitely reading a little bit low. So all I have to do now is find the right trimmers and uh, trim the thing in. How about that? Happy, happy. So it actually works. Yeah, I will, of course, uh, play around with the different ranges and uh, perform all the different calibrations and whatnot. But I don't think you want to sit here and watch a lot more from me doing all that anyway so thank you very much for watching and i'm super happy we have another success see you around bye bye